Tonight's scripture reading, it is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7b through 13. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order to not be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. When I was growing up, I was mostly a Christmas, church was mostly mostly an Easter Christmas thing. After all, until we moved, I was in a Catholic school. So I believe that my parents actually thought, we're all good here. We're doing the religion thing at school. And there I am. Uh, having my first communion at the Catholic Church. But then we moved. And in our new neighborhood, I met some really super fun friends. And I wanted to go to school with them. And so my parents enrolled me in the public school that was nearby. And here we are, and I think that one's kind of hard to see, but this is actually our neighborhood parade. And I am the one that's standing next to the long, skinny, blonde-haired girl, and I'm the other kind of shorter one, uh, twirling my baton. And these are the new friends in my new neighborhood. And we had such a great time, and we paraded through the entire neighborhood. And And Tara Loverpeck, you can't see her, she's kind of more toward the end, but she very quickly became my very best friend. And she only lived a few houses away. And her mom, her mom's name was Marlene. Marlene Overpeck. And I remember thinking how beautiful and nice her mom was. So... I don't know if you can see Mrs. Overpeck, but she's the fashionably dressed one in this wild flowered outfit (laughs) toward the end. Now, this is the 70s, so let's just go with that, right? That's Mrs. Overpeck, and she was lovely. She was lovely. We, We didn't play very often at my house, but we played a lot at Terrell's house. And her mom, she was so nice all the time. She never got mad and she always had cookies for us. I really loved Mrs. Overpeck. Mrs. Overpeck, though, she was continually inviting me to be with them. It started with the first invitation to go with them to church. They went every Sunday, not just Christmas and Easter. So I started going to church with them every Sunday. And she would pick me up, and off we'd go. And right away, when I got to their church, I noticed something. 
It was quite a bit different from what I was used to. It was Baptist. (laughs) But back then, I had absolutely no idea about this denomination thing. All I knew was that I really liked it at their church. And Mrs. Overpeck, she just kept inviting me. She invited me to church, and then she invited me to Bible school. And then she invited me to Pioneer Girls, which I think is kind of like Girl Scouts, and I actually became a Pioneer Girl. And then she invited me to Bible camp. And and pretty soon what I discovered was that I was going to church two times a week instead of two times a year. And then this Bible camp idea, well, I don't know about that, but I went. And it was really fun. Terrell and I, we got to make food over an open fire, and we got to sleep in tents. Oh, I loved it. But along with these wonderful invitations, and I loved it. Mrs. Overpeck also was a disciplinarian. I remember once when she pulled me aside very politely, just the two of us, and she said to me, Karen, I hear you saying... God a lot. Like, oh God, that was funny. Or, oh God, that must have hurt. Well, she suggested to me that I could pick an even better word to express my feelings and that I could save using God's name for prayer, praise, or when I talked about him. And to this day, I never say God unless it's for prayer, praise, or talking about him. And I know that might sound silly to all of you, but it created in me a reverence for God's name. Hmm. So Mrs. Overpeck invited me. And it was always a personal invitation. Mrs. Overpeck would say, Karen, Would you like to stay for dinner? Karen, would you like to stay overnight with us? Karen, would you like to come to church with us? Oh, I always was invited by name. And it made me feel really important, included, and loved. Now, I believe it was because of these personal invitations that at age 12, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior at that Bible camp that summer. It was the beginning of a personal relationship with the Lord. Little did I know then, but this invitation by both Mrs. Overpeck and Jesus would be what influenced my entire life. I never forgot the vital part that Mrs. Overpeck played in my faith life. She did it with a simple, personal invitation. And her welcoming and loving ways made it easy for me to accept. It all started with that simple invitation. And I, I was blessed by an invitation to get to know her family and then blessed by an invitation to know God. Now, a while back, I reconnected with Mrs. Overpeck. She's now 76, and I wanted to let her know what an incredible impact she made on my life by her simple invitation. She was astonished. She couldn't believe it. She had no idea that that simple invitation had made such an impact on my life. Now that invitation was simple to her, but it meant the world to me. She did her part, which caused God to bring in his part. And she expected nothing in return by extending the invitation. Of course, I did nothing to deserve it either. And Jesus, he invites us 
to be in a relationship with him. Not because of anything we can do for him, but simply because he cares for us, he loves us, and he wants to be in a relationship with us. Mrs. Overpeck invited me, not because of anything I could do for her, but because she loved me and she cared for me. She wanted to have a relationship with me, but she also wanted me to have a relationship with God. And as I reflect on this, it becomes very clear the power of an invitation. Now, as we move through this season of Lent, This is a time when we, we are invited to reflect and evaluate our lives in the light of God's reconciling love for us. Jesus gave his life that we might live. God is personally inviting each of us by name. Have you accepted the invitation? Is there someone you can invite to be part of your life and part of God's? It is my hope and my prayer that you will take seriously the invitation that first came to you in your baptism, an invitation that hopefully takes on a greater meaning meaning as you make decisions and order the priorities of your life. I believe that Mrs. Overpeck reflects the way Jesus continues to invite us to be in relationship with him. We can't repay him for the invitation, and he doesn't need anything from us. But he does want us to accept the invitation, and he wants to be part of our lives. Amen.